Hello and welcome back to another episode of I Hate Golf. It's awesome. My name is Caleb. He's Mark and we are joining you today from a gloomy kind of humid Old English Trail Golf Club in Florence, South Carolina. It feels a little bit more like summer today. Actually, it has kind of the past few days, but we've got some cooler weather coming this weekend. Should be actually pretty nice at the golf course. Um, How's it going? Okay, not a gloomy golf course, a gloomy day. Gloomy day, gloomy <laughs> golf course, same thing. Not really, but I, I see what you're saying, yeah. Going okay. Yeah, it's like, you know, again, back-to-back scheduled podcast. Mm-hmm. So that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, especially on a day when there's not much happening. It's like, oh, at least we have something to do we can accomplish. Yeah, I don't know about you. I feel like I've accomplished a lot today. I've recently got into woodworking, which by recently, I mean today I got (laughs) into woodworking. Um, I also used a chainsaw for the first time in my life the past couple of days. So I've been very productive. (laughs) But But it it has a battery. (laughs) Okay, well... (laughs) I don't trust myself with it's the other have a chainsaw. Well, it's it's <laughs> it's gotten the job done. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of you know kind of cleaning up the course and stuff like that here, getting some inside stuff done. But it's been it's been productive. Well, and it's like it is. It's because we have so much inside work to do with mm-hmm. our remodeling that they might even be able to hear in the background. I don't know, yeah. but you know, still finishing up the bathrooms and some other things inside. So yeah, it's it's kind of neat. It's like it's that activity is creates excitement even for us yeah as absolutely. we think see things getting done that's yeah. kind of cool to see yeah i was going through last night finally cleaning up some of my hard drives and just seeing some of the pictures from a year ago of mm. the course of inside and it's just yeah it's a it's a pretty drastic drastic difference in my opinion yeah. but but you know it's coming along so So today you wanted to talk a little bit about the name, I Hate Golf, It's Awesome. You wanted to talk about, you know, kind of some reaction people have shared with you uh, when they hear that name and, you know. Yeah, I think, uh, as I've said, it's like, you know, people say, it's like, what's up with the name? Mm -hmm. It's like, I hate golf. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they kind of stop there. It's like, people that read headlines never read the story. (laughs) It's like they're reading the headline and they miss the point of the whole title of I hate golf. And it's like, is there really a golfer out there at some point or at some moment hasn't absolutely hated the game of golf? Yeah. um, Based on that shot or that round or who knows the person you're stuck with, (laughs) who knows, or the golf course you're on. Yeah. But it's, there's always a reason to have that feeling. It's like, Oh, I'm miserable. Uh, usually it's, I hit that shot, I suck. What's going <laughs> on? It's awesome. It's like, and it is, it's like goes from, I hate it to it's awesome. Yeah. And, it, and that's, it's kind of a, it's a bizarre, quirky thing about golf. It only takes that one swing. It's like to knock it in there two feet or to make that 30 foot putt that saved the miserable hole for you or to shoot that low round it's like i can't tell you how many times people will walk into the shop and it's like oh so miserable i'm 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 taking a couple weeks off (laughs) then guess who walks in the shop the next day yeah right back it's (laughs) like oh okay yeah i didn't really mean it but Yeah. yeah that's that's kind of the point of the title and because that's the reality of the game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that kind of goes into the whole mental side of golf is not only do you have to have the physical capabilities, do you have to, you know, practice your swing, but I mean, the mental aspect of it is something that you can, you can work on obviously, but it only comes through repetition. And even after repetition, that's not something that, you know, is just kind of a checkbox. So, okay, I mastered the mental aspect of it. I mean, I mean, you go from the the beginning golfer to the guy on pro. Everyone is w- constantly working on the mental aspect of golf, and that's you know something that changes shot to shot, round to round. It's it's just a constantly evolving struggle, not necessarily in a bad way, but just a struggle to kind of get a get a handle on the mental side of it. Right. Yeah. It's it's and that's the thing about it. no matter and you said it no matter what level you at you're at. It's just that kind of issue for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it it doesn't matter whether you're trying to win at Augusta or trying to to win a skin in your local. It's like on your own level, you deal with that. So that's I think that's the thing. And that's probably 
um, what attracts a lot of people to the game of golf mm-hmm. um, because there is that nature of it of of accomplishment and failure. Yeah, um, yeah, failure is miserable, but it sets up your opportunity for accomplishment. So mm-hmm. it works well for everyone. Yeah, um, yeah, it's like someone goes out and they never hit a good shot and they never play well. There's people that actually quit the game yeah, because there's nothing there that makes that clicks that makes that happen for them. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, something that, you know, I'm going through right now with not being able to play too much is, you know, thinking about how how not how good I had gotten. But when I was able to you know practice and actually play a lot, it's like I was I was getting pretty good and I was comfortable. And it's like, yeah, I still hit bad shots and have bad holes and stuff like that. But I knew that I could go back to, you know, a consistent swing. I knew that if I hit this club, it's going to go this far and trying to kind of get back into playing more. It's it's hard to fight, you know, the idea in my head that I should be able to do this. Well, I can't do that right now. Right. I could do that a year ago when I was playing all the time, when I was practicing five days a week, but I can't do that right now. And getting over that mental hurdle is so difficult because I know right now I just don't have the time to put, you know, put that much effort into playing golf because we're so busy with other things. It's like I have to be able to find a way to still enjoy playing golf, even though I'm not playing at the level that I know I can play at. Right, which is you know, always comes back to when people come to me about, hey, can you work with my swing? I want to get better. Um, it's they have to learn, and I try to get them to mac- match their expectations with their input. Mm-hmm. And people aren't really good at that. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to play like he plays. Well, you know, he practices four or five days a week. Do you have time to do that? Well, no. Well, then guess what? <laughs> yeah. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of unique things about the game of golf, but it's like, you know, the I think it's the classic line of I hate golf. It's awesome. Yeah. Because it's that comeback. Yeah. And that's that's what happens to ev- most everyone with golf. It's like it's miserable and it's like, "Oh, I hit that shot. I love this game. Yeah. It's great." Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um yeah, it's there's there's just really nothing like it when you can finally, you know, if you've hooked four drives in a row and you finally connect on one, it's just it feels so good. It's it's like those other four are forgotten. Yeah. They're, well, it's a distant memory. Yeah, and you know, for me it's like just as personally how I feel about it. It's like I think that the four bad shots almost make the one good shot so much better it's the it's the you know the passion that comes with the i hate golf that makes the it's awesome so much better it makes it so much more enjoyable it's like okay yeah i would rather hit nothing but good shots all day but you know that constant struggle in a round is one of the things that i personally enjoy in trying to you know it's that, that that's kind of one of the, the reasons I always like to play from the back tees. It's like, yeah, I can I can hit it farther than a lot of people. And it's like I don't hit I don't hit my driver that far and stuff. So I I get stuck in a lot of difficult scenarios. I have a lot of difficult shots that you know, kind of force me to either use clubs that I don't use all the time or hit shots that I don't know if I can actually hit. But I enjoy that part of it because if I was just, you know, 100 yards out, 50 yards out every single time off the af- after my tee shot, it's that's not really fun to me. I like I like the challenge of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's you know, I I think I think if we connect it to who we are I think it comes back to everyone likes the feeling of accomplishment yeah when you can like even if it's just a shot it's like I accomplished that we like to sit back and look at that and say I accomplished it and that's just in us not yeah. telling other people it's just the feeling we get in that accomplishment it's like sitting and sitting back and admiring your handiwork it's like oh i did that it's yeah. that's that's awesome yeah i think that's i think that's what it includes so yeah it's i, I think it's an interesting name and um i wish people would get back past the three inch headline and read the whole thing yeah and then think about that a little bit yeah yeah 
So what else do you want to talk about today? Um, well, we've talked about the golf course enough, I think, yeah. continuing to work on it. Mm-hmm. Um, closing in, you know, here we are in February already. It won't be long before things change. But uh, um, I, was, I was thinking the other day about, about me and the question of what do you really like about golf? Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm starting to think some people miss that Mm -hmm. and they don't remember or they don't even know. It's like, why are you doing this? It's like, yeah, what we talked about, that feeling of accomplishment, but what really connected you with golf? You know, because I, I was kind of unique. I was, I was kind of a loner, you know, even though I played other sports and was around, I was personally, I was kind of, um, a loner and to myself. So the solitude of golf, oh my gosh, I just loved that. I thrived in that, that it was just, I was alone and it was me. And I played a lot of golf when I first started by myself mm-hmm. and I loved it. Um, and was able, even able to, you know, even when I wasn't playing alone, it was still about, oh wow, I, I enjoy this. Yeah, You know, that was, that was a big deal for me. Um, so, you know, it's just like, it's just like, uh, okay. It's like asking people, what do you like best about golf? What is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, to you, what is it? I mean, for me, it's like, you know, you know, growing up and always kind of helping you with whether it was the junior program or at different courses. It's like golf to me, wasn't something not that I didn't enjoy it, but it was just kind of so much a part of my everyday life that I just kind of, I just thought of it as normal. I thought of, you know, working at the golf course as normal and being around the golf course all the time as normal. And it wasn't really until I, you know, stopped uh, working with you as much and was kind of doing other stuff after college and stuff like that, that I, you know, when you asked me to help you out with some more projects that I was able to kind of really appreciate not just golf but golf courses and you know especially at around the same time I was getting really into like the photography side of stuff and the videography side of stuff and really just being able to kind of appreciate you know different golf course architects and architecture right. and you know the actual physical space of a golf course it's like that's what I enjoy the most about, you know, being able to be here is there's so many things that we have to do to the golf course that aren't always fun, but there's so many things that we get to do to the golf course. And that's, that's what I enjoy the most is just being able to look at the golf course and imagine the different things that, you know, we could do, or we would want to do and things that are totally undoable. But if we could do them, I would want to try. Right. It's like, I've, I've thrown out my idea of dynamite many times to you and you keep telling me no, but I just really like the physical golf course itself. I just, I, I love being on a golf course. It's my favorite place to be it doesn't matter if it's a rinky dink five dollar course on the west side of jacksonville that i'll never go back to because the ground was so hard that my (laughs) feet hurt but even even that is like i was on a golf course it was fun and i was playing golf and it's like even just walking around a golf course and even when i'm not playing it's because most of my time on a golf course is spent not playing it's like i just like being there i like the physical space and the energy that it has to it That's, that's what really draws me to it yeah What's interesting for me is that I transition from being a player, and when I was a player and a younger player, I couldn't imagine actually doing what I did today. I thought, how miserable. Yeah. You know, it's like, why would you do that? It's like, you're consumed by it. And then I realized what happened is that sense of accomplishment I got from you know, go out and shooting a 67 or 66 Mm -hmm. and playing well and and accomplishing that, it, it just easily transitioned to turning a golf course into that and seeing a golf course get better. Just like I saw my game get better. Yeah. It was that same feeling of accomplishment. So it's like, and I hadn't even thought about that until recently about, Mm -hmm. gee, how did you get, how did you end up doing something that you did, said you'd never do? And it was, it was just, the same mentality, the the same emotion involved. It's like it just transitioned over, and it just still happened to be with golf. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's I was just thinking as you're talking about 
you know, into photography and, and your creativity and those things. I'm pretty sure I know the answer based on that. Who's your favorite golf course architect? Strands. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. My two favorite courses and the only two strands courses I've played is like, yeah, Todd Hill and Tobacco Road. It's like, it's just, it's, it being able to look at, and that, that, that's probably my favorite thing to do on a golf course now, especially since I know more about golf course architecture is looking at a golf course in the way it's not supposed to be looked at, not just looking from one to two to three, but looking at the in between. And right. if I'm standing on the six green, where can I see? Can I see the the ninth tee from here? And just looking at the different, you know, and that's that's what I love so much about you know being able. It's like it's amazing now that you can have what used to be done with helicopters and planes and satellites. Like you can do, do in a drone now. It's like being able to see from above the right. actual layout right. of a course and just look at how it's all interconnected and what comes between. Yeah. It's 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 so much fun for me. Well, and it's like you mentioned those two golf courses they're not really considered his elite golf courses no you know tobacco road obviously is like it's yeah. a ton of play no, and I, yeah. everyone thinks of it highly but you know todd hill is kind of like even though it isn't rated that highly it's probably i can't imagine i mean it's like he came in and built golf disney world oh yeah he just created it yeah and it's just like in fact, I was talking to someone the other day. They asked me about the course because they knew we had looked at it. Mm-hmm. They, and you know, I told them, I said, what was fascinating is like it's impossible to pick out the old signature hole Yeah, because every hole can be a signature hole. Oh, absolutely. It just fascinated me. I, and I've been on a lot of golf courses, mm-hmm. and this was just a completely different world. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's like, yeah, I have a couple of, favorite architects but it's like yeah I, I agree with you it's like for just the sheer presence of being on a golf course yeah it's really tough to beat what he did yeah 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 and i mean the fact that he was only able to do was it seven yeah. seven that were actually his and a couple just, of redos maybe. yeah and it makes it it i think it just makes each one so much more special yeah and and yeah, it's just just looking at, you know, looking at golf courses the way he did is just so. I mean, he's not the only person to do stuff like that. Is like he's followed a lot of you know a lot of the layouts and stuff like that. But it just everything was to an extreme. It right. was just it was like yeah. it was just ultimate creativity. Yeah. And it's just yeah. You know, yeah, it was like every hole was he just created it like a canvas for yeah. his drawing. It's yeah, like, and that's what. It turned out to be. Yeah. So, well, and yeah, and it, some of that's kind of bizarre from a golf perspective of you weren't really thinking long term when yeah. you did that, but, but that's <laughs> yeah. okay too. Yeah. You deal with it. Yeah, there has to be the outliers. Yeah, it's funny you saying that about, you know, your transition from player to, you know, you know now oper- golf course operator and stuff like that. And it's like, it's like, I feel like that's happening to me. It's like, obviously, I never got to the level that you were at playing, but you know, even for me, it's like most nights it's like, I still like playing golf, obviously, but most nights I would rather go work on a bunker than I would go play three or four holes. It's <laughs> like, it's, especially, especially if I only have, you know, 30 you minutes, sick, an hour, real. it's like, I, I get, but I get so much more enjoyment out of being able to accomplish something. I'm kind of like that, but at my age, <laughs> it's telling someone to go do that. Is, is, it's usually is best me. For me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why I learned how to use a chainsaw this week. But no, it's true. And it's like, it's, it's I mean, especially with a golf course now a lot of it is you know pride of ownership yeah. um, if I'm going to be here I want it to be nice yeah um, you know not just the you know inside that we're working on and the attitude that you take toward your golf course but the actual physical nature of the golf course and it's just it's not easy yeah. um, it's like you know I can uh, I talk about him quite often uh, Ward Northrop mm-hmm. who was a golf course architect um that we lost a year ago. Ward was a great guy. Um, he always told me, he said, and Ward built, I don't know, he designed and built 20, 25, 30 golf courses. Mm-hmm. He always told me, he said, Mark, never forget, 
you're a farmer. <laughs> you grow grass. Yep. That's your job. Yep. Um, and how good you are at that is based on what you've accomplished. So it is kind of that basic. Yep. Um, and then we, then we do all the fringe things to make the make it look even nicer. So yep. yeah, it's a pretty neat thing. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Some days. Some days. <laughs> some days. Not yeah. so much. Yeah, that's that's what it probably. <laughs> well, I'm most excited to get the bunkers here fixed, but to see this place with actual grass, <laughs> it's gonna be so nice. Because I, like I said, I was cleaning up my hard drive. I was looking at some pictures, and there's no grass. It's green, but it's, there, there's no grass there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's you know, obviously when we came in, there was like I've said it many times. It's like. Gee, if we kill all the weeds in the fairways, <laughs> what's going to be there? <laughs> and it's like you know, it's like you know, just like Ward said, the grass responded. Yep. If you if you feed it and help it, guess what? It'll show up, and it has. And you know, it's just and realistically, it's a it's a three to five year project. I mean, it's just none of us want to think that. Yeah. We want to think we can go in and do it in one season, but you can't. Yeah, and from a from a golf course operations perspective the issue there is golfers are not known for their patience <laughs> <laughs> so it's like why aren't you doing this why didn't you fix that yet you should have fixed this first yeah. you should have done that over there before you did that it's just like and we're all you know i just shared with someone the other day we're all just golfers just admit it we're complainers yep. that's what we are yep. because we spend a lot of our time making excuses for that shot we hit it's it's always someone else's fault yeah um and then it's like yeah yeah it was probably me yeah but there's that burst of you know and it's i've i've gotten very patient with complaining golfers because i know we all do it and you just kind of let them burn through that cycle a little bit and then they're fine Mm -hmm. you know but then there's others that that's kind of their nature (laughs) and um we can invite them to play golf and do other things. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it is a lot of fun. But yeah, it's, golfers can be very trying at times. Yeah, you um, you have a lot more experience than me, which means you have a lot more patience than I do. Well, I'm really look. I'm really good at looking back to how annoying I probably was. <laughs> I, it wasn't my fault. I missed that putt. Yeah, it was. Can you believe what they're doing to these greens? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I can be patient because of that. I recall that stuff. So it's yeah. it's kind of okay. Hmm. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up for this week. Um, if you want to you know, give us a follow, five-star rating, all that good stuff. I'm not going to run through all of it. You know how to do it. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back next week hopefully with a live audience six o'clock friday nights old english trail golf club in florence south carolina any final thoughts you got before we head out that's it for me all right well my name's caleb that's mark and this has been another episode of i hate golf it's awesome we'll see you next week